We're gonna be going over how you can send confirmation emails after a user signs up for a account. So to do this, we're gonna be using Node Mailer. And the idea is we're gonna first start off by adding a field on the user to see whether they've confirmed their account. And we're gonna wait until the user has actually gone to their email, confirmed it before allowing them to log in. So that's what we're gonna implement. And we're gonna start by adding that field to the user before we even get into Node Mailer. So we're gonna to go to our user entity that we have here and we're gonna add a column. So I'm going to copy the password one and I'm gonna rename this to confirmed and this is gonna be a Boolean. Now I'm not gonna add the field decorator to it because this particular one is just gonna be a database field and we don't need to expose it to GraphQL. Then the next thing is in our login over here, uh, well actually I'm gonna just set a default value too. So I'm gonna set this to be a Boolean and just set a default value of false. Because we're not passing when we register a user whether or not uh, it's true or not, so we'll just default it there. Uh, and so we can add an if condition to our login over here. So we check whether we find a user, we check whether uh, the user put the right password, and now we wanna have a third check that says user.confirmed. And if they're not confirmed, we're gonna return null as well. Um, and so this is one where you may want to throw back uh, an error and be like, hey, please confirm your email before going forward um, rather than just returning null. But again, uh, it's kind of a security thing you need to balance. Anyway, so he, that's our kind of a check to make sure users cannot log in if they have not clicked on the email and confirmed their email. So let's go ahead and get into how we can actually send that email and actually get the user to flip this to true so they can then log in. So to start off, we're going to install Node Mailer and then we're going to copy and paste this little example and get this running to send an email. So I'm gonna start by saying yarn add Node Mailer and we're also gonna be using the UUID package to create unique IDs. Um, and then we're gonna need TypeScript types for both of those. So I'm gonna say add that as well. Uh, now, the reason I'm going with Node Mailer is it's a really nice package that's going to let us do test emails. So they have a test account that we can create and actually send an email to. So if you just go to nodemailer.com, and I'll link this below, we're going to copy their main example that we have here, and we're going to send an email with that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new package or folder called utils, and then I'm going to say send mail.ts. Let me just say send email. .ts. So I'm going to paste this in here uh, and then we're going to clean this up a little bit. So to start off with, we're going to get rid of use strict uh, and we're going to get rid of the function call at the bottom. So I'm going to export this function. I'm going to rename it to send email. I'm going to get rid of some of these comments, but go ahead and go through. If you haven't used node mailer before, I'd recommend just kind of reading through them. Um, so here we're going to create a transport. I'm gonna say const, because I don't think we redefine it. I'm gonna say const here. I'm gonna keep the default um, email sending here. And I'm gonna say const. And yeah, we'll get rid of that too. And that's pretty much it. So I just kind of trimmed it up a little bit. And I wanna just change the import statement as well, actually. So if we run this right now, what's going to happen is, and I guess we can make this const to be consistent too. If we run this, uh, or if we call this function, what's gonna happen is we're gonna create a test account. We're gonna create a transport, and the transport is how we send emails. Um, and then we're going to, right here, basically set the options or what we actually wanna send in the email. And then this is us sending it with the transport. And then here's us logging it. We want to add this to the log or console log it so we can actually see the message and click on it, which we'll see in a second. So to just test that this works, I'm just going to call send mail um, right here in the main function. So I'm just going to add it to the top. So what's going to happen is it's actually going to give us a link so we can view the email that got sent. Um, and what we're going to change is actually what the body of the email is going to be. Um, instead of just sending text. All right, so it started. Um, hopefully we should see something in the log about it sending the email. Um, 
I'm not seeing anything, and I don't know if it's just being slow or it didn't get called. So I'm gonna just add a console log at the top. And just so we can see if this is getting called or not. Oh, right here. So it actually did get called beforehand. I just console log that the server started up later. Okay. So if you scroll up, I have it at the top. And actually, why don't I, for simplicity's sake, instead of having this at the top, move it to the bottom. And I'm just gonna add it down here after the, the listen. That way it's easy to see. All right, so you should see something like this. Um, the thing that I was telling you about, this URL that we can click on, go ahead and click on that. We can actually see the email that we sent, the HTML version right here, hello world. So this is what we're gonna use to actually send our email. All right, so that is good. So now our send email, what we're going to send them is a URL that they need to click on. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take an email as a string because we also need to send it uh, to that person's email. So we're only gonna send it to one person. And then the second parameter here is the URL, which is a string. So I'm gonna put this in here, create an href, and I'm gonna do back ticks here. So we can do string template. And we're gonna put in the URL there And I'm also gonna paste in the URL as the text as well. Okay, so now when I call send email, I'm gonna pass in the email of the person that we wanna send it to and the URL that I want the person to click on to actually confirm their email. Um, let's go ahead and remove it from here now. So we actually wanna call this from our register function over here. So after we create a user, I'm gonna go ahead and say send email and I'm gonna await it. So here I'm going to say, who am I sending this to? The email. And the question is, what should our URL be? So this is kind of how I like to do this URL part. So we're gonna create a new function in our utils over here. That's gonna be create confirmation URL.ts. Export const create confirmation URL. Um, and so we're going to just pass in the user ID. So I'm gonna say uh, create confirmation email and we're gonna say user.id. So we need to take that as a parameter. Um, and do I also need the email? I don't think so, we'll see in a second though. So what this, this function is gonna do here is we're gonna take in the user ID. We're gonna say string and so we wanna create basically a token and this token is gonna to be associated with the person's user ID. And then when the user clicks on the link, we wanna send that token to our server and verify that the user has a correct token and then we're gonna confirm their account. So to create this token, I like to store it in Redis. So we're going to import Redis and we're also gonna import a version four of UUID. Uh, so this is gonna allow us to create a unique ID. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna say redis.set. So we're gonna create a Redis uh, basically key value right here. So the key is gonna be the unique ID and we need to save this unique ID. So I'm gonna say const ID. So we're gonna use this unique ID as the key and then the value is gonna be the person's ID, so we know the person who we need to confirm. And then I also wanna set an expiration date on this. So for example, you may want this link to expire after a day or after a week. Uh, so this is in seconds, I believe. So I'm gonna say one hour is 60 times 60, and then we're gonna do one day for 24. So one day expiration. And then we're just gonna return the ID. Um, and so await here is going to, so let's make this async. And we need to await it over here as well. Um, numbers not allowed, so there should be a number here. Um, the other thing is right here, and that's something we'll have to double check when we pass in the, I don't think we're gonna have a problem with strings and numbers for this user ID, but we'll see when we do a user lookup in a second. 
Um, the only other thing is we're not actually passing a URL back right now. So let's change that. So I'm going to say AGP slash slash. Now, sometimes I actually will redirect the, the, the URL back to the server. Um, but what I'm going to do here instead is actually redirect to the front end. And the front end is going to call a mutation. So I keep it all in GraphQL. So we'll see what that looks like in a second. So I'm going to say localhost 3000 slash confirm slash. And then we're going to put our unique ID here. Um, yep, I think that URL is good. So maybe you want to say uh, user slash confirm. So just a little bit clearer. Uh, so this unique ID at the end here is what we're going to pass and we're going to use to confirm. This is basically, we could also call this a token as well. And this token is only going to be stored in Redis for a day, so that's how it's going to expire. Um, you can also consider using a JWT token here. Uh, but one thing you'll notice is when we actually receive the confirmation email is we're going to expire the token. Um, and so that's nice using Redis. We'll be able to do that immediately instead of having just to wait the time limit. Um, all right, so we have this. We're creating the URL. So now we can actually send this. Um, let's restart. And uh, oh, did index over here. I have this imported, so let's get rid of that. So now when I register a user, it should send them an email with that URL. So let's go ahead and register over here. And I'm going to say Bob3. OK, so we can see the email here. Let's click on that. And now we can see this URL. So now we don't have a front end server right now, so we can't actually have it call the mutation, but we can just call the mutation ourselves manually. But we haven't actually created the mutation, so let's do that next. So this mutation is just going to confirm the user. So we're going to say confirm user. And I'm going to copy the login just so we get the same framework. We're going to have an at resolver here. And here I'm going to call this confirm user. We're going to pass in a token. And here I'm just going to return a Boolean of whether true or false, whether it worked. All right, so also we could consider uh, returning a string in case you want to do like an error message. So step one is I want to just check if the token exists. So here we're going to say user ID redis.git. And I'm just going to clear all this out right now. All right, so if we did not get a user ID, we're just going to go ahead and return null. We're going to return a Boolean from this. Sorry should return false instead of null. Um, OK, yeah, we don't sometimes return at the bottom. We'll fix that in a second. Uh, I guess we'll just return true at the bottom if we make it all the way through. So if we don't get a user ID, either they gave us a bad token or the token has expired. So we're returning false. Uh, otherwise, we have the user ID of the person that we want to confirm, and we uh, are good to confirm them now. So we're going to say user.update, Emerson await. Here we can pass in a where. Um, actually, I, I think we can just directly pass it in. We don't actually have to say where there. So I don't have to say user ID. We can just say ID. Second is what we're updating. We're going to say confirmed to true. Um, I think I said called it confirmed. Yeah, confirmed. I couldn't remember if I, if I call it confirm or confirmed. So we'll give that a save. Uh, this token or this should be a, a number. And I think that's what it's getting mad at. A string is not assignable to string. Is it, does it want me to do a number? No, it doesn't like it. I may have to parse int here. All right, that seems to be what I should be passing in here. Yeah, because the ID is expecting a number. And this is a string. 
The other thing is we may be able to just cast this to any and it'll cast it for us, but I think that's explicitly us doing that here is cool. So now we're saying this to true. The other thing is we wanna clear it in Redis. So we're just gonna say redis.delete. And this is, there's really no reason to have the user be able to confirm multiple times. So we just basically get rid of the token. All right, so get rid of this, get rid of this, and now we can test everything out. So we actually already have this stored in Redis right now. Um, if I try logging in with this user, it's gonna say I can't. So we'll run this. It says null. Um, we have the right password because that's what we said here. So it's really, we just haven't confirmed the user yet. So let's go ahead and call that mutation. And we have to refresh. And we also have to, in our index, import it. So this is going to be confirm user resolver. And now we can refresh it here. Confirm user, pass in my token. So now the token is gonna to be this value right here. And we'll run that. So true, we are able to confirm this dude. Now we can log in and we actually log in as the user. So that's pretty much the entire flow of it. Let's kind of just recap what we did. So first off, um, we called the mutation ourself using the token just from the URL. The idea is when we redirect this to the front end, um, and we're gonna be doing this in the future, is we're gonna read the URL and we're gonna grab the token from it and we're gonna, we're gonna call the confirm user from the front end. But the flow of this, just to recap, is the entire flow is we send a confirmation email when the person registers. So registered with Bob here. Um, and I have no idea why this is acting like that. Okay, there we go. We send the user an email and in the email we send them a URL and in that URL is a token. And so that token we created in the create confirmation URL and we basically create a token in Redis. We set the ID and this again, the token is just a random UUID. We are storing the value as the user ID so we know who we need to confirm. We're also set an expiration of one day on that token. Um, and you could again switch that to something else if you want to. And so we can then use this token, um, send it in the confirm user. It's gonna look it up in Redis, we get true back. Um, it's gonna look up that token in Redis, grab the user ID value, and then update the user based on it and set confirmed to true. And then we also just clear the token. And again, if we don't have a user ID for some reason, like we deleted the token, so if I run this again, we're gonna get false. Um, so it's gonna return false there. So that is the recap of how we did confirmation emails and how the whole flow kind of works.